The topic is what is beyond EBL and EST only in esophageal varices. I am not talking about the gastric varices. So sometimes it's very frightening to have this type of uh, image on the endoscopy, especially in children. And uh, EBL is a known modality in adults and children, and uh, especially the uh, children of larger size can take the EBL bandings very easily. But uh, small children, EBL is difficult, so sometimes we may have to resort to EST. EST, almost it is said that are the needles shed, but we have to keep the needles in our armamentarium so that in small children we may have to do the EST. So causes of portal hypertension have already been told. EHPVO is an important uh, in cause and there is also a classification of portal hypertension based on prehepatic, intrahepatic and posthepatic and intrahepatic again is categorized. So there are certain, I won't say newer terminologies, but there are certain terminologies that have come up well compensated and decompensated cirrhosis is well known. Fast decompensation after a bleed is also known. Further decompensation after a bleed, that is a bleed itself is a decompensation and subsequent to the bleed if there is encephalopathy and uh, renal failure that is called further decompensation and recompensation of cirrhosis and term I just brought in here. And of course we all know the ACLF. There are certain terms like CACLD, that is Compensated Advanced Chronic Liver Disease, this basically, and the other terminology you see, the CSPH, Clinically Significant Portal Hypertension. These basically terminologies have come, I think, in the last Babano classification, that is in 2015, where these uh, uh, fibro scans and uh, machines are applied. The liver stiffness, if it is more than 15 kPa, it's called, in a case we are following up, it's called CACLD and uh, if it is more than 25, the liver stiffness in a patient who is under follow-up, it is called uh, clinically significant portal hypertension because these patients are to be followed very, very closely. There is a certain other classification, I mean, uh, definition of, of uh, CSPH, but we will not go into all the details, it's mentioned here. Uh, one terminology is the porto sinusoidal vascular disorder. And in this, the first cause, that is NCPF comes. And when to suspect NCPF, when there are varices, you have noticed on endoscopy that has been done, there could be a splenomegaly and collaterals are diagnosed on imaging. And the, if the stiffness is less than 10 kPa, and if you have the facility, if you do a HPV, HVPG, if it is less than 10, is a strong consideration of PSVD, which is a porto sinusoidal vascular disorders, and there are certain other disorders, including cystosomiasis in this. So the esophageal venous anatomy, the drainage of the esophagus is into the azygos, the hemiazygos, and the accessory azygos, and certain other veins. It's a little complex to understand the esophageal venous anatomy. If the arterial blood flow in the uh, cervical, inferior thyroid artery, in the thoracic, branches from iota, and in the abdominal left gastric artery supply the esophagus and the venous drainage is into the cervical region, inferior thyroid vein, mainly in the thoracic region it goes into the zygos vein and in the abdominal left gastric vein. So the perforators are extremely important. If there are big perforators which you are seeing in the middle picture and you are seeing the EUS image, if there are big perforators the failure rate or the requirement of repeated EVLs or endotherapy may be higher. So we need to know sometimes about these esophageal perforators. So in any variceal bleeding, especially the esophageal variceal bleeding, the suscitation is very important. The target hemoglobin can be 7 to 8 and don't give too much of blood transfusion. That is the request we need to do to our intensive care doctors who all know these basic principles, but sometimes we may have to retell, especially if some junior is handling. Vasoactive drugs could be started straight away. Antibiotic prophylaxis should be given in all these patients and platelet infusion. Uh, I think Dr. Ramesh has said that it is 50,000 50, you need to give, but in pediatric age groups we can wait even if it is less than 50 and give if it is at 20,000 per cubic millimeter. And uh, endotracheal intubation needs to be done at probably the ER level or the AMC level if the patient is bleeding massively. And when we do the endoscopy, we require a relatively experienced anesthetist to handle the show. But if the plan B need to be there if endotherapy fails, so that is the crux of the present talk. So just see this. Uh, Middle, middle, middle part of the slide, 
where when an acute variceal bleed is there in a patient, what do we have got? We have got pharmacotherapy, EVL, ESD, SB tube, tips and surgery. Now, SB tube is available in adults. Even in adults, the SB tubes are not easily available. We have to particularly get hold of them after trying a lot. And the SB tubes are there for children, but they are not easily available. So we have got, after the EVL, EST failure, we have got still pharmacotherapy to go on, tips and surgery. So what is really <coughs> beyond EVL, EST is the tips, the SB tube, and the surgical shunts and sometimes liver transplantation, but anyway, in acute hemorrhage, it is difficult to apply liver transplantation. So there is a LR Dani stent in adults, this can be easily applied, but there is no experience in the pediatric age groups with the LR Dani stent. And the Sengstecken Blackmore tube, I think all the units should get hold of one Sengstecken Blackmore tube in the, for the pediatric age groups and keep it ready for the procedures. And uh, transjugular intrahepatic uh, shunting is to be available in our armamentorium, especially when we are handling a lot of upper GI bleeds and variceal bleeds, because if there is a failure, we need to get to this uh, procedure, and there could be a rescue tips when the EVL fails, or sometimes a preemptive tips. That means you do a EVL, but you decide EVLs and other things are not going to be benefited, my patient is going to bleed, then we may have to do a preemptive tips, and this preemptive tips sometimes saves lives. Uh, for doing tips in a bleed situation, there are no major contraindications, especially if the transplant facilities are available. Even a patient with high MELD score can undergo tips if the transplant facility is available. In our experience of 150 patients of tips, uh, majority have been done for the ascites, 40% uh, have been done for the bleeds. And I asked my interventional radiologist, is there any experience in children? He says, for variceal bleeding, I don't have. Probably we are doing well with our EVLs. EHPVO is another situation where the patient can come, there can be a massive bleed, and in these situations, we can decide for a meso-rex shunt. I think you can, you can uh, don't see the other three images, but see the first image where uh, mesenteric vein is anosmos to the left side of the portal vein, and in this rex recess, surgeons know much better about this. So this shunt can be come handy, especially in patients staying in far off places and in some patients uh, uh, who are expected to have a rebleed after the EVLs. So a brief message from my side is for the pediatricians or anybody, just, uh, I mean, I just want to communicate. Everybody in this hall is knowledgeable and have been handling these patients, but just, I thought I will just share my views. Mortality of first variceal bleed is low in children, and this is different from the adults. It is just less than 2%, whereas in adults, 25 to 30. 25 is a lesser figure. Up to 30% of the adults can die off with the first bleed. Guidelines of management of variceal hemorrhage in children is not well established. That's why whatever literature we collect is always from the uh, adult uh, literature. Common cause of bleeding in children is EHPVO and biliary atresia. We see patients of EHPVO in our uh, uh, unit. Biliary atresia, we have not been seeing much, but in the earlier units where I worked, there were some amount the cases of biliary atresia, especially in the institute. EVL is a standard method of treatment for variceal bleeding. EST may have to be done for small children, of course, but some people are more interested in EST. They would do it, especially in children. Vasoactive drugs, Sengstecken, Blackmore tube, tips and surgery are other modalities. Eladani stent may not be feasible in children and overall the management of variceal bleeding in children is still challenging. Thank you so much.